So good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's guest photography session. Hi, Stephen. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, very welcome. Really pleased to have you, pal. And obviously, um, an invite from our friends at Fundy as well. So uh, I've had a sneak peek of the presentation. So that's uh, I'm really looking forward to what you've got to share with everybody tonight. Uh, Stephen, just for people that might not be familiar with you, um, and I, as I wasn't before we met, um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, really, and how you got into uh, into the wedding photography and obviously where you're at today, pal. Have I lost you, Stephen? Hello, yes, I'm, I'm back now. I couldn't hear you there for a wee second. <laughs> sorry, pal. I seem to, we seem to be having a slight delay on uh, the internet between us. Uh, sorry, Stephen, I was just asking, asking you to uh, just give us a brief insight into you and uh, obviously your journey into photography. Yes, uh, no problem. So, yes, uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, so I have been a wedding photographer for... Um, about 10 years now and nine years to be precise um, and uh, that's around the, the, the same amount of time that I have actually been in photography and uh, I say that because I shot a wedding very soon after um, I took an interest in photography and um, before um, before I was a photographer I was actually a coach builder I built buses for a living um, in a, a local factory I'd done that for 11 years and it's uh, it was a job that I didn't particularly want to do for the rest of my life and I suppose I always was seeking something, um, something that I really enjoyed to do and in fact I fell upon photography very randomly. Um, I, I was looking for, for a hobby at, at first and um, I ended up you know, just sort of picking up a camera and I instantly got hooked. Um, and that, that was in 2008. And I, I started uh, studying online, um, online classes. Um, and I ended up going to university to do a degree in photography quite quick after. And um, after, uh, uh, after, you know, I started that, that was, that was basically me hooked. Brilliant, mate. And, um, and and was weddings always going to be where you were going? Do you think, or is that just something that's come with with the way things have gone for you? Yeah. So initially, I wanted to be a, a fashion photographer. Um, w whenever I went to university, that that would have been my plan. But uh, during university, I learned more the the sort of art side of photography. Um, producing series of images rather than you know single images and uh, for a while that that was what I wanted to do although I was getting married uh, you know in my second year of university I ended up uh, uh, going to get married so I needed money and I had shot a couple of weddings and I thought I can do this to get some money, but I quickly fell in love with wedding photography and uh, I haven't looked back since. Brilliant, mate. Absolutely brilliant. Right. Well, we won't waste any time. I'm going to give you the screen. So it's going to come over to you now okay. and I'll let you know when I can see everything nice and clearly before I uh, go quiet on you. Um, obviously, while we're just getting Stephen's presentation online for you guys, any questions or queries, please uh, pop those through the question panel. I'll ask those where appropriate. Um, and then uh, we've allowed plenty of time at the end um, for, uh, for, for questions as well. So I can see this just a, there we go, Stephen. We're all uh, full screen mode. I can see it nice and clear. I can hear you. So I'm going to go quiet, Stephen. If we have any, we've had a few sort of uh, delay problems. If we've got any problems and if I do lose, lose Stephen, then we'll just quickly pause the webinar and get him on the phone if we need to. Uh, but Stephen, it's all yours, pal. Great. Um, th thanks very much, Jay. So, um, yeah, uh, th thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in for this webinar. I'm very excited to be here and uh, to share um, my uh, any information I have to you. Um, so t tonight I will be um, teaching sort of through my experiences on shooting weddings and uh, using light. 
um, in particular uh, light uh, in relation to telling stories um, with weddings. So um, yeah, so um, I'll I'll just get get straight in straight into my presentation. So um, I I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you have any questions that you want to, uh, me to answer, um, get in touch with Jay through the chat there, and I am happy to answer any questions at any point throughout the the webinar. Hopefully my um, hopefully the internet holds up here. Um, it's usually fine, but uh, ho hopefully we're okay. Um, so um, tonight I um, want to go through a few things um, that I have learned over the last number of years in terms of uh, lighting. And just uh, as an overview, um, I, I don't want to spend too much time uh, talking uh, about the principles of light, but I, we will talk about that first. Um, I will go through um, using light on weddings and how I do that. Um, we will relate uh, how I relate light into the story. Um, and, and single images, and then after that, I will show some examples of. Um, I bring up multiple images to, into a complete story of a wedding, and I also have a pre-wedding uh, engagement shoot to do that as well. Um, so, first, first of all, um, you know, I I believe in in learning principles of light simply because if we don't know what we're doing before we go into a job. Um, then it's hard to know what to look for and what to do. Um, there is um, many different things to learn uh, with with lighting and especially with the, the principles of light. Um, but because of our time tonight, I'm going to go through some of these things quite quite quickly. Um, but um, do you know the good thing is that with light, once you have learned its behaviours and you have sort of tried and tested different things, it is very easy to spot where good light is um, and predict what's going to happen in terms of um, how, how different lighting scenarios look in your images. So um, the good thing is that you know we we can we can learn that and uh, that, we, that we can see it with our our very eyes before uh, before we take our pictures. So. Um, you know, it, it, it seems sometimes uh, lighting, it, it's daunting, I remember at the beginning, you know, thinking that, uh, especially in a wedding, um, I came home and wasn't happy with the way things turned out and uh, the lighting wasn't nice. And um, I I now know um, through experience to, you know how I can I can slow down and do different uh, do different things, but in the beginning it was tough. Um, I will say that. Um, but as time goes on, you learn so much. But in in short, um, the the three main things that I think about, um, what we'll go through in different uh, ways here tonight in terms of light is the direction of light, uh, the intensity of that light or the the power, and the quality of of the light. Meaning, um, as the light. Uh, hard, uh, hard or soft. So uh, um, it's very important because um, whether we're using natural light or flash, uh, we the direction you know has so much importance because, for example, if the if the light is over and above our heads, then uh, we we sort of end up with panda eyes and different things like that. So um, d direction. Um, is very very important. Um, the good thing is if we're using uh, something like a flash, we can control that. Um, we can control what direction it comes from. Obviously, with natural light, we can't do that. And that is the same with the the intensity of light. If we're using the likes of flash, we can change how how uh, much power is coming from the flash. And uh, and you know with with, with natural light. Um, that we can do that through reflectors and things, and with the obviously the quality of light, uh, it's the same. We can change uh, what we do with that, um, uh, with reflectors and soft boxes and different things. So, um, you know, the 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 three those three main things um, I'll probably talk a wee bit about throughout this presentation. Um, so, um. Whenever uh, I'm using light on a wedding, uh, the main thing for me is to know exactly what I'm going to use and when I'm going to use it. Um, there is times where uh, you know you, you you don't get it right every time, but 
you know, knowing what situation you're in uh, really, really helps. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, if you if you're if you're on a, on a bright sunny day, then you can you can prepare for, you know, using a flash or reflector or whatever. But um, the the thing about it is, with wedding photography in particular, we are under so much pressure, and I know how hard that can get, and I know sometimes you know the the pressure of that takes over. And, you know, you come home thinking, oh, why did I not do that? Or, you know, should have done something a little different. But, um, you know, there, there's so many different things come upon us in a wedding day. Like, for example, the, you know, we're working with people and that is never an easy task. Um, so, uh, you know, we have that to contend with. We have different uh, weather situations to contend with. Um, we have... Uh, you know, many different things that can come against us. And with that pressure, um, you know, it's good to know what you're doing. And I suppose that is through experience and through learning, uh, like, like things like this. So um, the type of uh, types of light that I use in the wedding, uh, obviously I use natural light or ambient light quite a lot. Um, but the, the other two uh, lights that I would use, I have an LED um, light and I also have a flashlight. So um, whenever we start going through the images here, um, you'll see that mostly it's natural light and, and flash that I would be using. So um, whether it's natural light or whether it's uh, flash, they're the, I try and simplify things so that I know, um, you know what, what, what I'm doing as such. So there's the four different ways that I will use light um, may you know, as always, um, the, the four things that you can see up in here now, whether it's uh, the sun that's providing the light or whether it's my flash. So um, the, the first thing there is, you know, as a key light, if I'm using flash, um, rarely would I use a, a flash in a, in a softbox as the, the only light source uh, on a wedding day, but it does happen. But, you know, very often uh, the main light source is coming from the sun. Um, and uh, maybe diffused by clouds or by trees or whatever. Um, but um, you know that's probably what I what we use the most as wedding photographers. Um, as a fill light, and um, that's the way I would use a, a flash more than anything else. I would say that's um, which we'll get into a wee bit more in a minute. Um, a separation uh, light, so. You know, some, sometimes I would use, you know, the, the, the sun um, coming uh, on the back of the subject or also use the flash for that. And then uh, as a background light, so for what that I mean, light in the background and emphasizing that more than the actual subject itself. But all, all these things um, come into play, um, especially whenever we're posing our subjects, um, which we'll get into uh, in a wee second here. So I think it's a good uh, time for me to quickly talk about uh, the equipment that I would use on a wedding day. Um, so the cameras uh, I use are Sony. I have a Sony A9, which is an absolute incredible uh, uh, wedding ca photographer's camera. Um, I would use that mostly throughout the day. Um, and I also have a Sony A7R3, um, which I would use mainly for uh, the portraits. And you know, maybe ask why. Um, it's because, uh, you know, with a bigger sensor, bigger file size, if I need to um, print um, any images bigger on, from a wedding day, it would be those. Although some days I just stick to the, the A9. Um, as I say, it's an, a, an amazing uh, wedding camera. And, you know, the low light capabilities is just superb. Um, and, you know, since I have switched to Sony, I have seen such a difference. Um, and, and how, how I uh, use the cameras on the day and stuff. So um, I tend to use one lens. I used to chop and change. Talking about this uh, quite a lot over the next few minutes. Um, the, the main thing for me on a wedding day is traveling light and having equipment at my hand whenever I need it. So um, I have been shooting with the 2047 in the last probably six months that has been stuck on one of my cameras nearly all the time. Um, so in terms of lighting, as I said before, that I use an LED which stays in my camera bag um, all the time. 
uh, and it's a photix LED, I can change the power of that and I can also change the color temperature. Um, so that stays in my bag along with uh, the, the Photix Metros Plus, which is a, quite a small flash. Um, and that would come, come with me uh, wherever I go on a wedding day. The, the biggest, the big light that I use is a Photix Indra 500. And I basically, um, you know, use that when I can and whenever I need more power. Um, but that, that is what I take with me. I have um, quite a small camera bag. I, as I say, I travel light and um, everything uh, is there for, for a reason. Um, so um, talking about uh, equipment, I, I carry just minimal equipment with me at, at, at different times of the day. For, for example, if I'm shooting bridal preparations, I quite often um, just take my, my camera um, with, the, with the camera bag and the sm with the LED and small flash in it. Um, I would never carry the big light in, um, basically because I'm trying to shoot quite a lot of documentary style images, and um, you, you know, the last thing you want is to be sort of faffing about with equipment and getting stuck. So I, I keep a minimal amount there. Um, so, you know, for for me at that stage of the day, I'm shooting um, normally with with natural light, and I, you know would say the main thing for me at that stage is you know I have to keep everything in control as you can see with the image to the right on the screen and um, that's a natural light that I, I used that's a, a natural moment but you know in fact I did uh, say whenever we were about to shoot this scene I did say can we do it in this particular area because there was nice light and I will do that quite often throughout the day whereas the picture to the left is obviously posed by myself um, but you know it's, it's natural light that I have used there, and the the natural light is uh, coming in from the 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 left hand side, our left hand side, or the the bride's right hand side, and I have posed according to that light, um, meaning I have turned the body away from the light and head back in, drop her chin down toward her shoulder, and you can see we've caught a lovely soft image of her. Um, so. Um, uh, you know, again, going into, um, I'll just go through this quite quickly, going into the ceremony and reception. Um, I, you know, know in advance that, well, most churches and most venues um, have have uh, windows coming on one side. So I'll always shoot from that side. Um, I never, very, very rarely will I use flash in a, in a ceremony. Um, I, I used to a few years ago, but with the camera technology now, I feel, um, you know, the all you're doing is pointing out that there's a photographer here taking probably far too many shots, and so I I don't use flash unless I really really need to. So that's um, you'll see whenever I start going through my actual wedding here in a wee second that a good lot of it is shot um, with the natural light, but then we move into a flash at different points of the day. Um, you know, and, you know, for example, whenever I'm shooting the portraits of the bride and groom and also the, the, the bridal party, um, I am in full control. Um, so that is whenever I bring my, uh, my photography style into action, so to speak. And um, I start introducing the lights, um, start introducing different sort of techniques to, to get different, um, to get different uh, scenarios sort of lit differently and to tell a story in different ways. Um, so, uh, Jay, do we have any questions at this point, or shall I carry on? Uh, only a couple, um, but I will ask ask it. Um, any reflectors being used at all, Simon, Stephen? Um, no, I I used to I used to use reflectors, and I found they were a hindrance to me. I work alone, so I I I just I left them in the car for a while, and now I just don't. To be honest, I don't even know where my reflector is anymore. So to me, I haven't time. Uh, I have no place to carry one as such, so I don't use them anymore. Brilliant. Uh, the other questions I've got are kind of more general, so I'll hang on to them for now, mate. You crack on. OK, no problem at all. OK, so um, um, re relating light uh, to the story, um, th there's 
there's different things. So we've seen this image a wee second ago. Um, as I said, I placed the, the people here uh, to begin with. I Well, I said, if you're putting the veil in, can we come out of the dark room, which was behind? And uh, this was set up, but then the moment happened. So um, the, if we were in where they were going to put the veil in, I would have had no light in the subject, and this picture wouldn't have worked because um, really, the expression is coming from the bride's face. Um, so for me, I have to have an element of control. As you know, it doesn't always work out this way, but um, if we can control something, we might as well do that. So the first number of images I'm going to go through here are all uh, using natural light. Everything is very soft. For example, here with the bride and groom walking away from the, the bridal party, I've just uh, the it was a cloudy cloudy day, yes, but the, the light, the direction of the light is coming from behind me. Um, I have shot that way for a, a specific reason. If I had a shot the, the opposite way, there would have been no quality light on the subject. Um, and I think it's very easy to get caught up in the moment uh, with posing and ideas and different things, but the actual light is the important part, first and foremost. So um, that's the reason why I've shot in that direction. Um, exactly the same here as natural light. The only difference being here, and you can you can see from the, the other side of uh, the bride, the far side of the bride, that it's actually a very sunny day. I have just brought the bride in below a tree, and I have used the fall off of light rather than just place her into um, sheer darkness or in shade. Um, she was specifically put there because there was nice light falling on her face, which is, is where you want your eye to go. Um, so um, whenever you're using natural light, it's very important that you put the brightest part of the image that where you want your eye to go to first, um, which is uh, mostly the face. Um, another sim simple image, um, the same again. The, the light is coming from behind me on the left hand side and even though it's a very soft uh, uh, soft sort of day and cloudy um, the, the image actually suits that I have posed um, in relation to that and what I mean is the there's a nice soft pose they're smiling at each other um, quite often um, as you'll see in a wee second whenever I'm posing and couples getting them carry on uh, or laughing um, I will always have soft light and you know the reason and uh, well they have soft expressions uh, laughter and smiling why would you put hard light and in, into that um, so that's the, the reason for that I am putting this image image into the the webinar because I'm going to show the show you these guys um, album here in a wee second but this is um, a family who um, I was shooting their wedding and in the lead up to the wedding um, they had lost a child and they had asked me if I would do um, a portrait for them before the wedding day um, but they wanted me to include um, the, 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 the child that they had lost and um, I had an idea of um, doing the you know, wee picture with the shoes as some people would do with a newborn but um, it wasn't until the sun came out and I seen the shadows, I um, I put the, the shoes and, and shot you know the legs and the, the shadows. Um, so this is a perfect example of actually showing how um, you know story can relate to light or the absence of light. So um, that was just, that was a portrait I've done of them. As I say, um, the the their wedding album will come up soon. Um, so and different lighting situations as I said before it's really good to be able to actually see what what you're doing um, this bride was uh, facing the opposite way getting ready and um, she I just I had seen there was lovely beautiful light coming in the window and um, I, I just sort of grabbed that opportunity so um, there there was a lot of light sort of bouncing around the room but um, the, the main thing was that the, the light is sitting beautifully on her face um, and again it's just about identifying like that room wasn't the prettiest of all rooms it was kind of like there was a load of books around but it was a bit of a mess and um, you know 
you know, my advice in that situation is just to go in close, as I have done here, and uh, you know that you that you get lovely, um, beautiful, beautiful images with just natural light. Um, and not another image with just natural light um, coming in the the church window. This is the gro a groom just before he goes uh, or before he gets married. And um, I have used the the light here. I know it's quite harsh, but um, it just kind of is quite fitting with uh, the pose and the sort of dark dryness of the of the church. Um, so rather than j just taking you know the groom outside and doing standard shots, I have always have it in my head both with the, the bride and the groom to do something like this to sort of vary the story of the day. Um, Again, natural light, um, just by over uh, overexposing in the camera, placing the, the subject in front of the sun and letting the, the sun sort of wrap around them. Um, you know, and obviously that's given a, a story of sort of dreaminess. I know everybody wants a sunset in their wedding. And for me, this is a perfect way to get the sort of lovey-dovey images of the couple. Um, but, you know, then I, I'll also... Um, with this, obviously, I introduce flash and do things with the flash too. Um, uh, th this is actually a reflected light. So I done a previous picture, but the, there was a white wall behind me, quite a bit behind me, but it was it was uh, reflecting the most beautiful light onto the subject. But you know, I I purposely brought the the subject here, um, and the the reason why I'm showing you that is just because. I actually, uh, you know, seen that the light was there and moved towards it. So same thing again with the sunset. Um, this was a, a really, uh, this was a, quite a wet day and the rain stopped for literally seconds. Uh, the bride had forgot her veil and people were away to get it. And I took the opportunity to take uh, the, the bride's picture here. Even though it was a cloudy day, outside of the, the church was quite flat. Um, as soon as I put the bride into here, you can see there's a bit more detail. There's some shadow um, areas, and there's absolutely beautiful light coming into the door. This is a fantastic way of getting um, lovely um, moody images. Um, I would encourage you, when impossible, uh, to move into doorways and then to uh, like below trees and do the likes of this here. So. Um, another image here, we've used natural light on the on the bride, but in fact, um, you if I, I, I enter just a small bit of flash into this image, and uh, I know it's very subtle, but the groom who was opening the door of the car, I have uh, my uh, flash at the other side of the car pointing toward his face. As I say, it's just very subtle, but if I hadn't have done that, then you wouldn't be able to see the groom at all. Um, so. Um, that that is essential to this part of the story. So because um, if you if you couldn't see his face, then it just wouldn't be the same. The reason why I done this uh, was because I had done the same picture before, and I didn't put flash on the groom's face. And I thought, uh, well, I knew that was the, was the wrong thing to do. So I thought I'll not make that mistake again. Um, another groom. I've been using a flash here. The the, he's in a, a Mustang, which is quite a, you know, sort of muscle sort of car. Um, and, you know, therefore, with the groom sitting the way he is, I have used quite hard light on him. I've used the bare flash of a flash gun here. And um, you get, you get obviously, the image that we have shown here. Um, this was a couple I showed you a minute ago. Um, this image would have been taken um, around the same time uh, I had done one with natural light. The only difference being here, I've used the, the flash um, coming from uh, behind them. You can see from the image, I have also put a wee bit of flash in front of them. You can see the light at their feet. Um, that's just to add to the story. And the reason why the flash works from um, behind as well is because the couple are looking back and there's interaction with their faces. Um, are you okay to keep going there, Jair, or any questions? I was just about to to step in because I think we've just got a, a chunk of questions about the flash and, and things like that. So should we should we ask them now if that's all right with you, Steve? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Brilliant. Let's talk about some specific shots then. The first one we saw 
uh, where the bride was in the car and you talked about the husband, you know, you used the flash so you could get the husband in the reflection. Um, can you just reiterate where the flash would have been? Uh -huh. Was it on him? Um, yes, so the flash, uh, if you can see, um, but where the back, where the back door is at the other side, I would have had somebody standing there with their hand um, up above the roof, pointing the flash and um, toward the groom at that side. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, perfect. And then with the 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 uh, the muscle car, the Mustang one, was the flash the flash? I was was it inside the car? Um, no. So with with this, the flash. Was um, actually, um, coming in through the window at the at this the left hand side. So um, the the I think I've actually taken a wee bit of the the flash away from the window. There was some uh, flash noticeable where the flash was, but I've taken it away. So that came from um, the left hand side. And it, obviously, are you taking an assistant with you, or are you just getting a groomsman or someone like that to give you a hand to hold the flashes? What's that? Sorry, I think I lost you there. Sorry, Stephen. Um, are you taking an assistant with you or are you using like a groomsman or a best man for the flash? Yeah, um, always. Um, I used to have an assistant. Now I just use the best man or um, or anybody walking past, really. <laughs> so, yeah, um, all alone. Uh, and I thought this was quite a good question, so I thought I'd answer, and, and ask it now. Um, <laughs> do you spend time researching the wedding locations and getting an idea for where the light might be in advance? Uh, what was that? Sorry, I, I caught the last bit. So do you spend time researching the wedding venues and the locations and you're looking for the light in advance of the wedding day? Okay, um, no, I, I, I rarely, I rarely do that. Um, I used to, but now I I think it's more important to know, um, to, to be able to see light and, and to act with it straight away. And the reason being, um, you know, the, the day you go to the venue and look at it, well, a few, two days later or whatever, the light's probably going to be um, completely different. So, um, no, I just, I, I love to work spontaneously. I don't plan too far ahead in terms of shots. I, I believe in sort of learning how and when to see light and just acting upon it uh, straight away, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, perfect, mate. Brilliant. Cool. That's all the questions for now. I'm going to hang on to the rest, so you keep going, bud. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to go through these um, sl slightly um, faster here, and then I'm going to uh, just share with you exactly how I get my exposure. Um, a different, a couple of different techniques I use to get the exposure. So, um, well, I'll I'll do that now actually. And um, with this image, the the sunset is obviously behind quite uh, behind the couple. Quite often, what I will do um, is use my small flash behind the couple. Um, so, the the Metro's Plus uh, flash gun I put behind and hide it. I hid this one behind the the chair. And I have used my main battery powered light, the, the Indra 500, on the subject. Um, I tend to use small modifiers. So I will either use just a standard 7 inch reflector uh, with a, a honeycomb grid on it, or I used to use um, a, a beauty dish with a, a honeycomb grid on it. Um, now I'm actually using a, a, a small uh, octobox, um, which basically stays on it all the time. But the main thing for me there is that it's small. Um, the, the modifiers aren't too big. I, they're portable. Um, they don't get in the way because I'm carrying this light around myself. I like them to be sort of as accessible as possible. So for this, um, quite often I will put the, the light um, to about 45 degrees off the subject and um, coming down um, sort of 45 degrees as well. Um, the pose is very important here. I have. Um, brought the bride's face in toward the area where the light is coming from. That's very important. And also um, the, the groom's head is turned in and there's a bit of interaction between them there. 
the light behind the subject is um, adding to the story because of the natural light coming from the sun. Um, but what I would do in this uh, case is, um, no, it doesn't really matter whether you're using mirrorless cameras or not. I do now, and I can see, you know, through my viewfinder, the, the exposure I'm getting. Um, there's a couple of different techniques you can use. Um, if, you're, if you use ma manual mode in your camera, I would suggest, just suggest, um, you know, well, number one, there, you know, you get, I used to use high-speed high sync a lot. Do you know, I don't think I've actually used that prob probably in close to a year now, um, simply because I've just got into a way of working. I set my shutter speed um, and my ISO first. The shutter speed's probably usually in around 100th or 160th of a second. Keep the ISO as low as possible and then just adjust the aperture uh, to suit. I want the image uh, roughly to be about a stop, uh, one stop below. Um, on a sunny day, that would need to go further. Um, but uh, in this case, you're probably talking one stop below. I want to retain the shadow detail and also the highlights uh, in the sky. And once I have that exposure set, um, I will fill in with the flash. Um, the, the sort of go-to uh, flash, uh, you know, if I have the a sunset, you know, I'd probably have my flash on half power. Um, you know, there's no, you can use a, obviously use a, a light mirror if you want. Um, I'm obviously I'm a bad boy, I don't use one, but um, again, it's just through uh, time. I have uh, a minimal equipment on me and I've got to know now that you know, if I start off at half power, I will probably either just have to go up or down a wee little bit. Um, but, you know, if your light has TTL function, that works absolutely amazing in these situations. Um, but the main thing is, is to check uh, the ambient light first and get that sorted and then forget about the flash until you have that sorted and then you're basically filling in. Um, filling in with the, with the light. Um, if you need to put the, the light, the power up and down a wee bit or maybe move the direction, then that's all you need to do. And the same with the backlight, it's the same, uh, it's the same uh, technique as such. So um, an another image I just want to show you with natural light here, that is uh, the sun is coming with behind the couple. The wee flower girl had these um, bubbles and wanted me to do a picture. You know, if it wasn't, um, for me knowing that if I want to highlight these bubbles, I need the, the light either coming from the side or behind. I, I moved them into that position um, to, to have that effect basically. But it's about knowing these wee these things and acting upon it. Um, you know, whenever I have a, a couple walking away from the camera, um, nine times out of 10, you want the couple to be walking in toward the light whether that's natural light or whether you um, put a wee bit of flash from the other side backlighting them. Um, to me, the story, if they're walking away, um, they should they should be walking in, into that light to add to the story as such. Um, th this would have been a, a silhouette if I hadn't, or well, the, they would have been in shadow if I hadn't have introduced a wee bit of flash here. Um, there was a storm uh, in, the, in the background. It was quite a, well, a really windy day, and I just wanted to highlight that fact. So I've just filled in, same technique as before, I just filled in with a slight wee bit of flash. Um, the, the main thing is uh, with this is to actually um, not put too much flash in. I, I think that's what I see the most uh, with other people's images, and indeed my own used to be, um, you want the flash to be subtle, the slightest B pop, um, just so that you can work with it, or you work with your file um, afterwards um, too much, and then it just looks fake. Um, so that this this is actually a workshop image. I'm just showing the exact same technique and how sort of dramatic um, you can you can get stuff using the sunset with the backlight and filling them. That's just one one flash with a, a beauty dish on it. Um, so I think for 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 time purposes, I'm just going to. Um, these these are all the same and um, flash coming from the left um this is just to add a wee bit of drama to the image um it was quite flat without a flash and i put the the flash one uh flash gun coming from the right hand side and you can see the shadow of the bride and the groom um but the the difference the flash made there was was brilliant um 
I'm going to keep going here. This is again just filling in the flash. Slight pop of flash just to highlight the subject. And again, um, exact same thing here. Uh, I won an award for this image, and I remember the judge saying, I'm glad you didn't like the 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 man going past and I uh it was actually a bit of luck with this image because I had the I it was in Paris and I had the 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 light was on the last shot we had done about half a mile down the road and I just seen the man on the bike and quickly told them to look at each other and I think there was a wee bit of luck with it but the my, my assistant who was with me at that time um barely got the flash turned around in time. But um, exact same technique as the light is coming from the other side of the couple, but I have filled in with one flash. Uh, and a slight wee pop of light here, otherwise there would have been no light on the on the faces. So um, I, I want to go through this, uh, I'll go through this quite quickly. So that this um, is me going into um, a pre-wedding engagement shoot by moving, uh, Flat by using natural light um, and moving the subjects in relation to light, you can tell a story just with a series of images. Um, I have designed this uh, uh, in Fundy software, which is obviously a very, very useful tool to use. Um, but as you can see, I have started off using natural light. Um, this is the, the natural sort of poses of the couple. I have them having some fun, um, playing around with each other, all natural light. and um, you know, everything sort of kept at a constant there. Um, that I then um, would, would introduce um, slightly bit of flash and bring um, the story of the album coming into a wee bit more sort of uh, story and drama. Um, you can see there just exactly how I've used the, the fill flash um, and with the off camera flash. Um, and just moving uh, in, into the story, having them looking at each other um, again, still having fun at certain points in time, but we're getting a wee bit more serious as the light gets harder and uh, the sun's going down that wee bit and uh, the story just sort of changes throughout the, the album. I, you know, can, can use the, my exposure differently um, to adjust the sort of story as such. And then um, this is, this is uh, an album that they have actually received and then coming toward um, the, the end of the album is just sort of finishing off with a wee, uh, quite a dark sort of good night type image. Um, so Jay, um, what, what are we like there? Have any questions you want me to add or will I go into the Have a Wedding album here? But I'm not sure time wise. Uh, no, let's, um, again, most of the questions that I've still got now are sort of gen uh, general ones. And obviously what we can do is, you know, you and, you and I can make sure we stay online and answer as many questions as we need to at the end. So let's, okay. uh, let's go through the album. Uh, but I have got some really nice questions that I do want to share with you. But uh, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's okay. So, okay. So um, the, I, ha I have two, two albums here. I hope I have time to go through them. But th this is one you'll see, have seen some of these images and uh, um, uh, that I've just shared. But um, so generally um, there's a couple of different ways that I will design an album and um, the, the first way that I would do that is to start off um, with some sort of a, a story um, and some sort of drama or storytelling and I, I consider my work as uh, cinematic so for this album this is the um, this is me starting off sort of dramatic and then I will end with some sort of drama normally I'll use off camera flash in those those images um, there's quite a lot of pages in this album, so I'm just going to move swiftly on. Um, you'll see most of these I'm using natural light, um, but I am placing the the subjects or the I am placing the you know the, the shoes and the different things in, in a position so that they are actually getting light. Um, and the same with whenever the bride is in the room getting ready. If they are not in a position where there's nice light in their face, don't be scared to say to um, the 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 hairdresser, whatever. Start getting into your posing. You're in full control of what you can do. Even if there's a dressmaker in uh, fixing the bride, you can, you know, by all means, tell them to to turn the opposite direction so that you have nice light in the picture. Because you want things to stay at a constant. Um, going through 
um, all these images um, with the father meeting the bride, um, everything's exactly the same. Um, and whenever I, I get to the, the groom, I, the first thing I am looking for um, is where is the direction of light coming from? You want you know, something like this wasn't the prettiest of churches. I had to sort of go in close. There was a lot going on in the background. Um, so um, I'm, I'm trying to keep everything um, just as constant as possible for the album because there's no point in me taking um, something um, really, you know, half my image is really dark at this stage because it is a, a sort of soft opening to the album. She's going in to get married, everybody's happy. And, um, and the lighting in the church, this particular church, the lighting was pretty bad because um, the only uh, windows are coming from one side and there are actually curtains over them, which is quite high up. This, so that we can get to the, the other parts. This is all just ambient light. Um, whenever we got outside, um, there was a wee, I think there had been just a shower rain, but the light was actually quite nice where they were. I have set up this shot. Um, this wouldn't happen naturally. I have to place the, the wedding guests right and left to create a tunnel and get the bride and groom to walk through it. It's just adding to the story. Again, this is the picture, a double page spread of the album with the bride just about to get out of the car and the groom opening the door. Um, and now we just start going into their portraits where I, um, if I, if I do use flash, I'm wanting to use it in the most subtle way so that there's only the slightest wee pop. Basically, I want, I don't want the picture to look like I've used flash. I haven't used it here, but there will be some times where I have used it and you hopefully can't tell because, um, you know, so if, if I want it to look that it has natural light, it should look like that. Um, going through the bridal party, different poses. Um, I never spend too much time, normally about 10 minutes with the bridal party. Um, just going through a, a run of my poses and then going into the bride and groom. Natural light, again, getting the natural pictures of them. Nice soft light. Soft light, soft posing. Um, you can you can see in the image to the right there that I have used a wee bit of flash there. And then in addition to sort of more dramatic images, I've got a few of those in the album. And before uh, we go on to the speeches and that, this is me just photographing the actual um, venue. This wedding I didn't actually stay late. I just photographed until the speeches. Um, there was lovely, sort of nice, even light, slightly flat light in the marquee, as there usually is. And then I'm uh, finishing off the album with something, a couple of dramatic images of the bride and groom um, and having a wee dance. This happened in the afternoon and then heading upstairs. Um, how are we there, Jed? Will I just stop with that album or will I go through Nicola and Phillips? Uh, no, I think we're good. If, if is, is it about the same length of time, Stephen, do you think? Yeah, this one's shorter. Yeah, yeah, let's keep going, man. I think it's really interesting the way that you sort of, you know, will lay out the actual wedding. So I think it's good for people to see. I think they're yeah, absolutely. So, so this wedding album's slightly different. I have um, used um, one one layout um, for for this couple, um, and it, like every single page in this album is the same uh, in terms of the size and the layout. Um, you know, F Fundly Software has literally uh, changed my uh, whole sort of outlook. I used to pay somebody to design my albums um, and uh, you, know, you know it was like normally sort of 30 or 40 pounds to for each album design. Now if I need help I'll, I'll pay her to come in for a day and design eight or, you know seven eight nine albums in the one day which is obviously totally different. But I don't, I rarely need to do that because it's so fast, like it's 15, 20 minutes per album. It's absolutely amazing. Um, but this this album here, I spent most of the time in this album creating the story in terms of uh, telling, or sorry, in terms of telling the story and taking pages, you know, swapping them about and stuff. So um, this this album, as I say, every, every page um, is exactly the same. Um, I'm trying to sort of go from between a sort of happy and sad vibes because this is the the couple that had a, lost a, a child and there there's um there's sort of two different stories running there. Yes, it's a very happy day, 
um, but there's also a bit of sadness too. Um, so, yeah, you can see how I'm using the light there. Um, the bride is nearly sort of silhouette up on the top, and um, that was a natural moment. I placed the, the, the father and mother, and she just happened to fix her dress. Um, moving on to the groom, this is full sunlight. I am sort of using the light to the advantage uh, in terms of the pose. I'm turning the, the, the groom face in the left picture into the light. Uh, the light is obviously coming from the left, and that's done in intensely. Um, moving on to the, the bride, same pose as I done with the groom, meeting her, the, the son, her, their other son who um, was waiting on her. Um, you can see the sort of sad vibes coming through here but this and um, the lay of this album is just um, to keep, for, to me this has to be you know simplistic. Um, I don't want loads of pictures to take away from the story. We're back into happiness. They're heading off in a helicopter, which was a surprise. And then we're into a very sad moment, obviously, of um, of their, their remembrance of their wee boy and their day. And then um, I have tried to sort of flow that sadness um, back from, uh, the, obviously, the visit from the grave, a picture of the wee boy moving into a sort of sad pose um, with the, using the harder light for that. And then... Um, creating sort of more happy vibes, going walking, uh, walking away from the camera, posing, looking at each other, and then there are just uh, a few more sort of poses and a wee bit more sort of happy uh, vibes, and then finishing off um, and the, the portraits with the bridal party and the, then the reception venue um, speeches. That this is important to point out here. The, the windows behind the bride and groom here are, are massive windows. There's a lot of light pouring in. Um, if I went at a 90, 90 degree angle of the bride and groom, I would have absolutely no detail in the background at all. Um, I have shot from that one side for a um, couple of different reasons. The main one is the background, but also to get nice light on the, on the bride's face. Um, so uh, think about that. If you have a lot of light coming from behind, just move off to the side. And uh, I have been using a wee bit of flash on the camera here just to get um, images of the bride. That's her with her other son, who was very sad at this point, obviously remembering his wee brother, and then finishing off with some um, with some poses and sun sunset. So um, that's the end of that album. Uh, Jay, if you want to, um, I'm ready for any questions. Well, there's a few there, mate. So get yourself sat down for a second. There's not going to be any particular order, Stephen. But before I forget, mate, what an insight. So thanks for that. Um, there was a couple of things no problem. Uh, I wanted to pick up on. But, uh, you know, as much as, you know, we've been invited to you tonight to join us and obviously Fun Day Up as well, um, I can't stress enough how fast and how brilliant, you know, the Fundy does change, is a game changer. Uh, and if you haven't seen it already, guys, go and uh, watch the, the webinars that we've done with Fundy. It's actually, you know, Andrew Funderberg himself on how easy it is to use. But let's get into the questions that I've got for you, Stephen. Um, let me just okay. um, rob the screen back a second. Okay, so um, as I said, mate, not in any particular order. Um, how much time would you say that you spend in po post production per wedding? Um, so I have I have two um, I have two different uh, areas that I concentrate on. The first edit which um, calling and editing the pictures takes me three to four hours. Um, that basically gets the images into, you know, called down and into a state where I can sort of show them that their sort of color corrections and things uh, are done. Um, and then the, the next stage, which is at the album time, um, I'll spend probably another um, couple of hours on uh, editing the album images. Um, before that, that's maximum a couple of hours editing the album images before the bride and groom, and um, before I order the album as such. But I don't do that until I have the images um, approved by the bride and groom on the online proofing uh, system. Brilliant. Um, I thought this was quite an interesting question and quite uh, apt now that we're showing your mugshot with uh, with your big Canon instead of your new Sony. So I might need to update your update yeah. your headshot, mate. Um, the question though, with regards to the smaller the, the smaller mirrorless systems now, 
Have you had any um, negative reactions uh, from from the clients using the smaller cameras? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, I bought a Sony camera a couple of years ago, um, and I remember somebody, another photographer, sent to me that it didn't look very professional, and I did take that on board. Um, do you know now? I, I nobody has said anything to me, but um, do you know if they did, I would just tell them it was an amazing camera or do you know just tell them how much it cost <laughs> and um, that, that would maybe ch change their, their view <laughs> i think perceptions are definitely changing i think a few years ago it was a different cat the fish but now with you know the yeah. technology people are so familiar with how good your your mobile phone is that they, they don't seem to have that issue yeah. with anymore and obviously your work speaks for itself as well at the end of the day but um yeah so i think that was i thought it was an interesting question um yeah. we had a, a similar question come through a few times so i just kept the one um it was quite early on the first question came through i think there was a couple uh walking uh past the river there was a sign just behind them and the question was obviously we've noticed a few shots of the bride and groom uh, and even in your engagement shoot where they're walking do you get them in walking mode or do you pose them as well to pretend like they're walking to get the shots? Does that make sense? Yeah, so any shoot that I do, I always and like always start off with a walking shot. Um, you know, the first time I do it, I will just say, just come walking toward me. Um, my The purpose is to get rid of any... Um, sort of uh, unnaturalness between them and any, you know, sort of tension. So I just get them to come walking toward me. I maybe try and get them to laugh. And then I'll tell them, you know, I may not even use these pictures, but I'm, I tell them exactly why I'm doing it. And that kind of gets rid of any, uh, any sort of unnatural uh, vibes between us. And then throughout the actual wedding day, the reason, well, the reason why I do that, I used to get stuck. And I, I had a thing in my head where I thought, if I get stuck, I'll just tell them to walk. But now it's actually the main part of my posing because I, I want it to look natural. So um, now I'll get them to walk and I have wee things that I'll do to sort of introduce different shots, like get them to stop and look behind and do different things. But the, the walking is the basis of probably most of the posing I do on the day. Brilliant. Um, I thought this was quite a nice question, Steve. Any tips on um, calming the couple's nerves to make them look more uh, less tense? Yeah, so, um, that, well, first of all, get them walking. Um, that, that, really, that really, really, really does work. Um, get them, you know, if you, you need to work out people's personalities. That's a very big thing. And what I mean by that is, um, don't get them doing silly ideas and uh, whenever I say silly ideas I've done it myself um, you know I you put people under pressure by doing things they might not want to do and then the awkwardness just gets even worse um, so try and keep things natural like um, if you can get the couple to interact with each other you know sometimes just say just hug tell them to have a week just to talk amongst themselves a wee second you need to fix something in your camera or change your settings and i you know within a few minutes they'll have relaxed um and you know obviously you should be shitting that you you're just pretending you're fixing your camera um you know so the the main thing is is talking to them getting them interacting with each other and for me the movement in it is um uh, key to sort of making them not look uh, awkward anymore but um, you know, you know. Sometimes I just get them to fool around with each other, not in a cheesy way, but even if it, you know, just smacking into each other and you know, sort of, uh, yeah, just trying to get as natural as possible. Oh, great advice, mate. Brilliant. Um, it's quite interesting, especially like you know, you were talking about in in the way we did the album flows, obviously, and, and tonight's title was storytelling. Um, is that something that you discuss quite a bit in advance in with the pre-wedding? You know that you 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 are, you know you are a visual storyteller. Is that in com a lot a big part of the conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have, I I tell my couples, you know that that what I try and do is be as honest as I can, um, with with couples, and um, I I will I will tell them that, you know the reason why I take so many images, the reason why. 
I need to start somewhere like walking and we'll finish the album off walking. Um, I'll tell them how passionate I am about printing and uh, that, you know, I want to sort of fill their album and do all these different things. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I will sit down with them before the wedding day and tell them, you know, exactly what. Um, I tell them what to expect and what not to expect uh, in terms of, you know, how mo most people will say, I find I hate, uh, please don't pose me. So it's very important that I tell them that I do pose, but you're going to look like this and have the confidence and, you know, just to say that you will look natural, you know, so I, I go through all that stuff with them uh, beforehand. Brilliant. Uh, what I found really interesting tonight, Stephen, oh, well, not, not well, all of it, but it was quite nice how we actually showed tonight the engagement album and the fact that it was an engagement album, which I thought was a really nice take on that. And a few questions came in from that because you treated the engagement shoot in the same way, albeit a mini version of the wedding, but by telling the story of the engagement. Is the engagement session a, a separate sale for you or is that part of the wedding package? Um, no, that's a, a separate sale for me. Um, I used to include uh, an engagement photo shoot in my packages, and basically, like you know, I you know a few years ago I was shooting seventy five weddings a year. I've I've put my prices up and reduced that now, but basically everybody took it, and I was running all over the place doing these shoots, and people rarely bought anything. Like I just I really had to catch myself on, so now. You know, under my name, I have I have two brands. One I don't shoot for, the, but under my name as such, I, there's three shoots that I do. And that's the first thing I tell people um, whenever we start talking business as such. Um, I have a pre-wedding shoot, which I call a connect shoot. And I sell that to them. Um, basically, they're connecting with each other, yes, but it's, uh, it's also to connect with me. And we will... Well, we'll spend, um, you know, two to three hours one day, you may be going for a coffee and doing this. And at the end of it, they will get an album that I don't have. I, I All my sales are pre-sold. So I, I don't, I do all beforehand. So I say, this is what it is. You get an album at the end of it. There is a chance to upgrade that. But the, the main thing is that they're getting an album from that shit. Um, the, the wedding day is exactly the same. Um, you know, the, they know the sort of price going in. Um, they they will get um, a free album as what I would call it my standard sort of a graphic studio go book on the wedding day but then have a chance to um, upgrade their albums and then with the post wedding shoot I don't do an album for that but I have they get extra album pages but all three are separate sales as such Brilliant. you know what I mean yeah no it's great and I just thought well that, it, that was the thing that I picked up on from that engagement shoot seeing it the way you treated it and obviously just Kaching was like well, album sale. There you go, and you've just answered, answered pr brilliantly. I love that. And so you know, it's thinking outside the box as well, isn't it? People just think, oh, the pre the engagement shoot is, you know, just the you know get used to the photographer, get used to us, you know, and they might you might get a picture out of it, but uh, an album sale, brilliant. Yeah, yeah nailed that. Love it. Brilliant. Uh, I thought this was quite a nice question. I think you've kind of answered it, uh, but I kept it. It was regards to sort of the details and getting the shot of the you know the hanging up dress um are you I, I presume you're not afraid to ask not necessarily do it yourself but ask for the dress to be moved for the right light and the right location uh, yeah i i just um i will always ask before i move it myself but nine times out of ten i move it myself i just said um i make a joke of it i say do you trust a man to move your dress and um, most people just say yeah go ahead but while others will say uh, no, I'll move it, <laughs> you know, so, but I always ask, and I, I, what I do, though, before the wedding day, I will say, you know, on the morning of the wedding, the first thing I want to do is get those, so I don't particularly like those shots, to be honest, I prefer photographing people, I say, I'll do that first, can you please put all your details, anything that you want photographed into the one room, um, say it's a bedroom, and lay it all out how you want it, um, you know, if you want me to sort of, you know, I, I can fix it and stuff, but um, rather than me running around the house wondering what you want photographed, just put it all in place. Some people do it that well. I don't even have to move it, um, you know. So um, that 
but that's the reason why I ask that is just to make things easier for me. But certainly, if I have to move it, there's never a, an issue doing so. Brilliant. Um, do you have a checklist of shots with regards to the bride and groom photography? Is there something you always go after? Yeah, so um, and now that is basically in my head. I What I used to do, I used to um, write wee small sort of cards and have um, a, a checklist as such. So I kept that in my camera bag and um, I would have referred to that throughout the photo shoot. And the reason for that is because whenever you're under that amount of pressure, I found I could easily walk away thinking I had a load of pictures and didn't have enough. Um, but generally it was the opposite. I used to come home thinking I got nothing today. And then whenever I looked at my images, I probably photographed them far too much. But it just shows you the pressure I was under. So, but now I just, I, I have, I have, a rule that if I photograph a bride and groom full length, I'll do uh, I'll do three shots in the same way as somebody would probably do video. I'll do a full length, I'll go in closer and I'll go in closer again. And I do that for nearly every shot I do. And it means that I have three shots in one pose as such. Um, and you end up, you know, I do, you know, most bride and grooms, I, ha I don't have them much longer than 20 minutes um, for their own shoot. So um, you have to be smart in the posing. So you've just answered one of my other questions is how long do you get for the couple's portraits so uh, which is so. Yeah, yeah. it varies uh, the yeah the very most <laughs> and a, a very very most sometimes you would have you know people for an hour but generally i tell them that an hour does everything and and you know i would say 10 minutes for the 10 15 minutes bridal party 10 minutes 15 minutes uh family photographs and 20 minutes to half an hour with the bride and groom. I've done everything in 15 minutes before um, because I just have had to. Um, and surprisingly, the album was, uh, you know, you couldn't really tell any difference, but um, in, in that sort of case, you don't do much creative uh, different stuff, but yeah, um, it's just, you have to keep it moving. Brilliant. Um, do you fate well, obviously tonight we've, we've mostly seen uh, rectangular albums is that what you prefer Stephen because you said you you prefer the cinematic or will you shoot square um, I do um, I do a square album the the pre-wedding album is a square album um, but I generally there's very few images and that would go full page and um, with my weddings I don't offer portrait albums at all everything is uh, the la landscape albums simply because of my style and I've actually never had you know I've shot over the last sort of five six years I think I've shot 350 to 400 weddings I have um, never been asked to change that um, to portrait so well um, with some of the wider shots would you favor on-camera flash if you needed it um, the only time I would use on camera flash. Um, in fact, I haven't had a flash on my Sony yet. So the only time I would have used it is during the dancing um, uh, and possibly um, in, in a really dark church if I had to use it. But that is an absolute if I really have to. Um, otherwise, everything is off camera. So it is. Even now, with my Sony, I, I use the and the dancing. I have my 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 flash in my left hand and my camera in the right. If I'm doing, you know, like second curtain sync uh, shots at the very end of the night, um, which I had been on Saturday night, I'm walking about with the flash up above my head and pointing at the subject and the camera in my hand. So never, I just ne never use it on the camera anymore. Brilliant. Um so just with the uh, going back to sort of pre-discussion with the bride and groom uh, before the day, are we kind of are you running through the sort of the running order of the day in advance, or do you just go with the flow? Because you said you do a mixture of documentary and sort of obviously posed. Yeah, I go through every detail um, with the bride and groom. Um, what what to expect? Some so basically what, but what I say is um, the things that I really need, and I'll split it up to the morning, the church. And, and the afternoon and I'll say I'll tell them what I do in the morning so it's natural shots 
detail shots, and then I say, is there anything over and above that you want? Do you want pictures in your dress? Because if you do, we need to arrange a time, because I meet the groom normally at the church 45 minutes before the wedding. I just explain all that. Um, and then um, I explain that on the church, they won't hear from me. I'll be in the background. The next time they hear from me is if I'm doing a shot of them signing the register, the, the officiant would hand over. And then I just say, for the for the afternoon, I the only thing I demand on the wedding day, and um, because I'm not like a demanding person as such, and I try not to take control, I try and be as quiet as I can. But I said I always say whenever I'm doing your pictures, I need you on your own. I don't, I can't have people um there cheering you on simply because I can't get the best out of a couple. If, for example, the bride's uncle is watching. Like, you know, if I asked them to kiss or something, how awkward would that be? So I honestly don't care. People shooting over my shoulder. I could do that all day. I'm not really worried. It's more as a, as a bit of expression for me. So I the only thing I say in the afternoon is, please, can I have you on your own? And if anybody goes to, to come along, um, rather than me be the cheeky one, can you please say we need to be on our own here? And that always works for me. Um, I kind of put it into their hands. <laughs> No, brilliant. I get it. Absolutely. Um, how many, how much, what would you say your average? Well, okay. It's a two part question, really. How many images do you think you actually shoot on a wedding day typically? And how many then do you actually deliver to the bride and groom, would you say? Um, do you know what changes for every wedding changes? Um, I used to, I used to shoot, um, I would say anywhere between a hundred images. Um, you know, a few years ago, I was very selective of my shots. Um, and I think I was so selective of my shots because I was listening to people tell me to do that as such. Um, I, now I just shoot to my heart's content. I, um, every wedding's different. And if they have me on my standard time, which is bridal prep to speeches, I would say an average between 1,500 and 2,000 images. And they will get probably 600 uh, images or six, between, anywhere between five and 700 images. Um, I have come home from weddings with 4,000 images before, um, especially if I you know, had uh, a couple of weddings where I had two shooters and I had around that. But generally, that only happens about once a year. It's normally in, in close to 1,800, 2,000 images now. Um, or if I feel if it's a bigger wedding, um, I just sometimes somehow end up coming home with a lot more. But, um, you know, the most I've ever gave a bride and groom are about 1,000 images. Um, but I try not to do that because I find it's too many. But because the album, like the most I've ever put in an album, I think is about 160. Um, but generally the albums only have about 70 or 80 uh, pictures in them. Brilliant. Well, actually, that leads us on nicely to the to the next couple of questions. I was <coughs> sorry, excuse me. <coughs> um, you mentioned earlier about obviously um, in in part of the presentation that you know you proof the uh, images to the the bride and groom via the the, the Fundy proofing software, which is brilliant. Um, do you do you kind of determine what's going in the album, or do you let them have some say? Is it, so what I'm getting at is it like a pre-album design? Are you kind of picking the best, or are they choosing all the images? Okay, so um, uh, the way I used to do it, I used to tell them, please um, send me a written list or email me a, a list uh, of the file numbers that you want in your album. But generally, I found it was about two years after the wedding that I was hounding people to get to get their their wedding album to them. But um, I decided to change that, and I tell them now, look, um, if you if you don't mind. I'll pick the pictures. Um, I'll do that soon after I have your wedding, the first stage of your edit done. And I will send you, um, you know, your wedding album design via um, the online proofing site. And at that stage, if you want to change the pictures that I've chosen, just, you know, put a note into the, the software onto the site or tell me to change it or, you know, we can go through the whole thing again. And, you know, I would like nine times out of 10 people agree to that. And very rarely do they have more than one or two changes. Um, because at the end of the day, I shoot weddings like all the time. So I, I've got to know what they want in their wedding album. 
sometimes I miss maybe a family member or something, but generally it's fine. And uh, that means now I can tell, I say to them, if, if you let me do this, you know, you probably have your wedding album within a few months of your wedding. Otherwise, um, you'll get into the way of life and I'll probably hear from me in a year's time, you know. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, guys, uh, I will ans ask Stephen the questions that we have left in the question panel, but we have run over. So uh, I, these are the last questions I'll answer now. But uh, thank you for all your input. We've still got a few to go, Steve. Are you OK to stick with us for a few more minutes? Yeah, no problem. Brilliant. Uh, I thought this was interesting. You showed it right early on that you're shooting the A9 and the A7. Was there a reason that you chose two different Sonys rather than two identical ones? Most practices is to have a backup that's the same. Yeah, so um, some some uh, some friends that use Sony um, had said to me, "Go for the A seven R 3 um, It's you know it's kind of more of the all round camera, and the A nine's a sports camera, and I I thought I'll test them out. I just I, I love the A nine. Um, I did think straight after, why did I not buy two of these? But I'm glad I didn't because. Um, the A7R3 I use more so um, for, you know, if I get a commercial job or for portraits, you know, that I think I might get a, a larger uh, wall print sale, I will use I use the, the A7R3. Whereas wedding albums, 90% um, probably more of more than 90% of my wedding albums are all the same size, um, for, sort of 14 by 10. Album, well, 30, 35, 25 album. So um, the files are more than enough for that. I use the A7R3 for the off-camera flash for the main portraits that I do because that's more than likely what somebody's going to order as a bigger frame. But if I need to use the A7R3 on a full wedding, there is absolutely no issue doing uh, doing that because they're a very similar camera in many ways. Brilliant. That's great, mate. Thanks for that. Um, this is a question about post-production. Um, are you doing it yourself or do you outsource it? Um, so I have went through stages. I was last year using um, pro image editors to do the first stage edit. Um, and uh, I was calling, sending the Lightroom, uh, the smart previews to them and they were Um, but in the midst of the summer, um, if I'm under pressure, I like I have no problem doing using that external company to do that. But I try and do it myself as much as possible. And do you favour uh, presets or collections or uh, in your post production? Or um, I have I used pre I used a, a ex, like an external preset as such for the first time last year. Um, generally, I just sort of make up my own. Um, I have. I have a few different ones that I use on different weddings, but it all depends on, you know, if it's a sunny day or if, if you know the color of the bridal dresses or how dramatic it is. I kind of change it to suit each wedding, but I do have a few, and some have came from some of the sort of generic ones out there uh, that I bought. Um, but you know, I am just using my own. Brilliant, mate. Uh, we're getting there. Just, uh, just two more questions to go, Stephen. Um, you mentioned uh, that part one of your packages or part of your package was a, a post wedding shoot, and somebody just asked uh, if you could elaborate on that. And what is a post wedding shoot? Okay, so I give uh, the bride and groom an option to um, do the post wedding shoot is similar to a trice the dress shoot, but we don't trice the dress. Basically, the way I sell it to them is we will meet up um, either the next day after the wedding or, you know, a month later or whenever they can. They will get back into their wedding attire and we will meet up. You know, some of the locations in this country in Northern Ireland are amazing. Um, and generally, I will say, let's meet up somewhere, you know, just uh, that we couldn't get to on the wedding day. Um, Generally, I use the coast and mostly Game of Thrones set locations. There's quite a lot of them over here. And um, I just say we'll spend two or three hours getting like really, really nice images and there's no pressure. And you, with the sale, you'll you'll have 10 spreads in your wedding album and all these pictures will be put in at the end. 
Brilliant. Great. That's what I thought it was, but it'd be great to, to great. Thanks for sharing that with everybody. Um, last question I've got for you, Stephen, because I said, I'm, 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 otherwise we'll be here all night. I uh, thought this was interesting. You mentioned about uh, times where you do work with a second shooter. In those instances, would you still be doing the post-production or would the second shooter do their own editing? Uh, no, I'll do, I'll do the uh, post-production on, on their images. Um, do you know on the occasions where a bride and groom have asked me for a second photographer um, or maybe I have just thought it was a big wedding and you know, on a few occasions I've you know, maybe asked a couple of friends to help. Um, they're, they are basically taking, uh, you know, a different angle of the 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 vows or the church service or whatever and speeches. Um, so quite often it's the more sort of natural photographs which tie in with mine anyway. So um, generally I, I don't use a lot of a lot of those images in the album anyway, but um, it, certainly they're easy to edit in the same style as mine because they're usually natural light. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Stephen, before, well, there's a few things we'll, we'll talk about quickly before we go, but in case I forget, and I, sh I, I never forget, uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. It's been really insightful. Lots of praise in the chat panel, thanking you uh, for your insights. I think we've been so busy talking about you, we've made Jack a little bit redundant from Fundy, but Jack, if you are there, thanks for being with us, mate. Uh, but obviously anybody, I've got to say, stress, you know, we've talked about it uh, not so much tonight, but uh, if you haven't tried Fundy already, you've got to go and do the free trial because it will change uh, your album design uh, immediately and you won't believe how amazingly fast it is. Uh, it's so intuitive. So, guys, you've got to go and check that out. Uh, Stephen, mate, thank you so much for uh, joining me tonight. Um, I think uh, I'm very much sure that I'll, I'll be inviting you back. So, hopefully, uh, I'll, uh, you'll be up for, for doing it again in the future. I'd be love to. Uh, maybe we can look at. Uh, maybe we'll look at just something. Absolutely. Thank. Thank you so much. Thank you.